Hello everyone, your voice here and welcome to our channel Sensivir101. So for this episode we're going to feature a Sensivir Trifashiata cultivar and we're going to add another one or several uh, cultivars to um, add to our playlist for Trifashiata species. Uh, currently our Trifashiata species uh, already contains about 67 uh, cultivars just from uh, Trifashiata species alone. So we're going to add more until we uh, can reach almost 70 or 70 and uh, what I'm showing you right now is having the ID of Sensibria Trifichetta Honey Eye Streaker uh, for reference you can find a reference about uh, this Trifichetta cultivar in the Sensibria Trifichetta varieties by Juan Chainayan uh, that was back 1986 uh, at uh, or on page 85 and uh, actually Chainayan uh, said that Sensibria Trifichetta Honey Eye Streaker came from uh, a loop Sprite mutation. Uh, for myself though, I have actually uh, an actual evidence of it coming from something else. We have a video of uh, a Sensibria Trifichetta Honey Eye Streaker coming from uh, the Sensibria Trifichetta Silver Frost. Like I mentioned, Silver Frost is a Trifichetta cultivar that uh, can produce a wide variety of other Trifichetta cultivars. Um, no one believed me when I said that uh, from Silver Frost you can get the uh, Mutant moonshine, moonshine or just Moonshines from Silver Frost. Uh, Mutant Moonshine, the other name uh, of it or the trade name for it which is of uh, um, of course not accepted uh, the Brazilian moonshine because they did not originate from Brazil, Brazil. it's just someone who just made it up to make it uh, flashy in terms of uh, sales strategy for them so uh, like I mentioned I have an actual video uh, and thanks to Michael for uh, bringing that up to me and I will be sharing it as an overlay as we discuss the Sensibri uh, Trifichiana Honey Eye uh, Streaker uh, in a bit. I'll be adding the or I'll be adding the overlay as we discuss the characteristics of Honey Eye Streaker. So, again, uh, in the market you would see them by other names. Uh, other people would uh, also uh, invent names for them. Uh, so, folks, if you already have uh, a Sensibria Trifichetta Honey Eye Streaker and then you find out that there's uh, another uh, one being sold on it and you're not sure, then um, I would tell you that the first publish is Sensibria Trifichetta Honey Eye Streaker and it has a lot of... Um, it can transform, uh, sorry, transform to several... Uh, forms for example uh, the one that I'm showing you right now is being called uh, honey eye swirl or trifashana swirl in the market but in reality they are just honey eye streakers and uh, that is because this is actually what streakers are when they are in juvenile form uh, the, these are two of the offsets uh, here's another one this is the smaller offset and they are the actual uh, form of honey eye streakers but eventually when you're growing them uh, for years or uh, for how many months uh, more than six months perhaps you would see that they would transform to this form which is uh, a, a twisty leaf uh, or twisty leaves type of uh, trifichata uh, that's why other people would call it as a swirl because uh, the leaves are swirling However, they are still part of the face of honey eye streakers. So folks don't be um, Fooled by people who are selling it uh, As different IDs because they're just one and the same. So if you're one of the people who bought uh, honey eye streaker and honey eye swirl uh, differently in the hopes that you have two uh, pl two different plants with you then uh, I'm sad to say that you just purchased one type of trifichetta cultivar which is the honey eye streaker alright so 
uh, going back, like I mentioned, there are also folks in the mar market that are selling them as uh, Centuria Trifasciata gold band or something or gold uh, something with gold uh, and explain that there are also phases wherein they become yellowish color on the leaves but the new color of the or the juvenile leaves are always whitish the new ones they could transform to something like uh, uh, something like a gold this this leaf actually looks like a, uh, a honey eye gold but actually it's just part of the Centuria Trifasciata honey eye streaker so uh, there are a lot of forms for this cultivar and uh, I'm just sharing with everyone the characteristics to help you out uh, into uh, learning about the characteristics of honey eye streaker and uh, I guess I have already mentioned that you can find reference of it in the Sansevieria Trifasciata varieties by Juan Chainayan um, that was back 1986 it's on page 85 and also you will find it on the International Sansevieria uh, Society journals it's issue 33 page 3 all right so uh, folks, that's all of the uh, history or uh, a brief uh, description of the cultivar that I can give you. Uh, this cultivar is actually growing uh, okay, but uh, you would see that there are leaves that, alre that are already wilting. And uh, there is a time or a season here where they were attacked or they were susceptible to uh, fungal infections that is why uh, some leaves have wilted out also some leaves have burned that is because uh, i have not been putting them in uh, shade or i have not uh, brought up the uh, net that protects them for extreme uh, sunlight so again uh Centuria trifasciata honey eye streaker is a very delicate type of uh, trifasciata so some say that trifasciatas or snake plants are very easy to grow uh, that I am opposed to that because if you had experience growing especially the short leaf or some people would say dwarf type of trifasciata or dwarf snake plants like what I am uh, showing you right now then you would understand what I say when I say that they are very difficult to grow and the care level uh, should be you should be at uh, expert le level uh, in uh, growing these because even experts would l easily lose uh, the short leaf trifasciatas if they make uh, crucial mistakes so uh, one mistake would be uh, too much moisture uh, if uh, people would forget to uh, dose them with insecticide uh, they will they are susceptible to several types of pests like aphids like mites so you have to watch out for uh, those uh, pests that will attack your sensitive fasciata so like I said they're more delicate than the uh, larger types or the compact type of uh, tray fasciata uh, one for one the core is uh, can be easily chewed by mites and uh, there are symptoms to find out if your plant uh, is already attacked by mites uh, you would see that there are red reddish marks those are actually bite my marks from mites and if the core are attacked by mites then most probably the rot will start from there so if they are wounded by mites if you water them uh, on on that part where it was attacked then for sure the water will go inside the system of the plant and will cause uh, rot to the entire plant itself so that's why it's dangerous if you forget to dose or forget to check uh, these short leaf trifasciatas if they have uh, uh, pests on them especially mites 
uh, aphids too can cause uh, fungal infections uh, when some of their leaves are uh, being attacked by aphids and then the moisture would uh, seep through them they become uh, brown spot fung fungal infections actually uh, this one already has but uh, fortunately it already dried up uh, because of the uh, position where I put them they don't um, actually or the uh, brown spot wound would actually just dry out dry out and would not uh, would not spread to the leaf so one thing that you can do is to expose them to sunlight but uh, just take heed that uh, too much sunlight will also burn them. Another technique would be uh, getting a mini mini fan uh, beside it and uh, have it fanned out until uh, that uh, portion of the leaf uh, dries out. That is also one way of uh, curing uh, fungal inf infections in terms of uh, trifasciata. So. For uh, the one that I am showing you right now, uh, I'll have to put in the camera or I have to clip the camera so that I can uh, do some maintenance on it. Alright folks, so I'll be clipping the camera so we can uh, be free and uh, we can do some maintenance stuff on it. I'm sorry about that. Ah, okay, there you go. So, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add some more fertilizer on it. Let me just uh, work on the uh, fix fix the camera so that it can be steady. So again, uh, first that I'll do is uh, I'll put in a basket for it. And then we'll put in some um, slow release fertilizer. So that's the use of the black basket uh, actually, is to hold up the um, slow release fertilizer. And it is where you would actually also try to uh, water them. So put it. As such on the side there you go so we have uh, managed to put the uh, slow release fertilizer and this one is a systemic pesticide it's uh, actually starkle G it's uh, pink in color and they're granules granules so you just put it on top of the bus basket and uh, lastly, I'll add in, that's a lot actually, I didn't uh, actually plan to pour out that amount in just a little bit, but that was fungicide to keep them, uh, or to keep the uh, brown spot fungus off of them. So next, uh, I'm just showing this to uh, show you how I do it, how I do ma ma maintenance in terms of uh, the uh, short leaf trifasciatas because they're cl cl really the, the cleaniest type of uh, sensivirus. Um, like I mentioned, if you made crucial mistakes, if you just make a mistake, uh, most of them will rot out. So those are the three steps of my ma maintenance. I put the slow release fertilizer on the uh, black basket. The black basket, by the way, is uh, I guess it's uh, a size of a coin in diameter, and then it holds up all the uh, slow release fertilizer. And I added up the pesticide and then the fungicide. So those are the three steps actually. And uh, if you have been tuning into the channel, sometimes I would give out some tips uh, in the middle of discussing things. So that's why I encourage people to. Uh, support the channel or watch the channel because you will really learn something from it I would share some tips uh, on how to grow uh, sensibirius like at what I'm doing right now so the moment that you're all set up what I do is I this is my watering uh, method I put it in this type of uh, 
water and container and then I would just do that on the ma basket uh, I don't usually uh, water them on top because I like I mentioned I'm not sure if there there were attacks of mites on the topmost portion what I would do on top though is I would just spray some uh, hydrogen peroxide rather than water it on top because I'm not sure if there are wounds on there if you wet them then water will enter enter the system and would make the plant rot all right so folks I think this is it for uh, this uh, episode of uh, Sensivia artificial species so if you have any questions or suggestions feel free to uh, leave a comment below and if you like what I presented uh, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel thank you for watching you have a great day